Good morning. It's Wednesday, August the 19th, and this is The Drill. Thank you very much. Welcome to all the butchers, bakers, and candlestick makers out there. I'm Ron, your host, and the only true conservative in the United States today. Who is the false conservative? The false conservative is the man that's been brainwashed by the left. He is the man that pretends to be morally neutral. He gives you the facts and lets you decide. He's the man that acts first and thinks later. He's the man that is obsessed with politics and current events. He thinks that he is conservative because of his position on the issues. He's traditionalistic and reactionary. He's dogmatic and makes the same mistakes over and over again. He's overly concerned with politics and elections. He thinks that one merely needs to elect enough conservatives and presto, the problem will automatically be solved. He's movement-oriented and thinks that to defeat the left, you must think and act like the left. The false conservative is idealistic. Examples of false conservatives are George W. Bush, Mitt Romney, and Susan Collins. This podcast is not about uh, convincing your politician to do a better job, but to aid you in shaping American culture. If true conservatives can restore our culture, then politics will take care of itself. My podcast is short, approximately 5 to 10 minutes long, because shorter podcasts are easier to download and listen to. The biggest socio-political influences in my life are my parents, my teachers, Ayn Rand, and Dr. Mortimer Adler. My podcast is made available through uh, Spreaker and can be heard on iTunes, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. Today, where do we stand? How can a true conservative win? Quote of the day, good news, do not be fooled, and how to think about the inevitability of change. All that when I come back. Thank you, thank you. Where do we stand? President Trump has brokered a peace deal between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. The USPS may or may not be ready to process millions of absentee ballots on November 3rd. The Democrat Party officially nominated Joe Biden as their candidate to run for President of the United States, confirming Jill Biden as the evilest woman in America for encouraging her husband's campaign to continue. The Biden-Harris campaign is designed to mock the Constitution, the rule of law, the president, the election process, and the American people, and make a fool out of Mr. Biden in the process. Thanks to the incompetence or malfeasance of the Chinese communist government, the communist flu continues to rage with no vaccine yet on the horizon. Businesses and schools continue to be locked down in defiance of the wishes and the will of the American people and the testimony of relevant specialists. And the outlaws in Portland and elsewhere continue their violent ways. No law enforcement union has been decertified and no laws shielding officers from prosecution have been repealed. This means that law enforcement unions continue their inherently corrupting influence over our civilization. The Senate has boldly gone on August recess without passing a relief bill, and the President has courageously signed four executive orders to provide unemployment extension and eviction relief. When I come back, how can a true conservative win? Thank you very much. How can a true conservative win? Talk about what should happen and not about what will happen. One of the areas where the left has brainwashed the right is predictions. The left left wants to discourage the acknowledgement of values and looks to do so by encouraging people to make predictions instead of making value statements. You will hear even Rush Limbaugh succumbing to this brainwashing by constantly making and celebrating predictions. Every time that Mr. Limbaugh does this, he is devaluing ethics, devaluing right and wrong, and without statements of right and wrong, conservatives cannot win. When you're talking to somebody and they start to make predictions or ask you to make predictions, gently and ever so slightly change the subject and make a value statement instead by telling them what should happen not what is going to happen. Next up, the quote of the day. (laughs) 
Thank you, thank you. The quote of the day comes from dailyscripture.net. Lord Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may serve you joyfully and serve my neighbor willingly with a generous heart, not looking for how much I can get, but rather looking for how much I can give. Amen. Remember that we have free will and that we are moral agents. Coming up, good news. Thank you. The good news is that the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has struck down a California law banning high-capacity magazines as being in violation of the Second Amendment to the Constitution. That the Trump administration has brokered a peace accord between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. That Attorney General Barr and Senator Lindsey Graham are conducting a thorough investigation into the treasonous behavior of former FBI Director Comey and his co-conspirators. The good news is that Rush Limbaugh is still broadcasting and is successfully beating late-stage lung cancer. The good news is that the stock market is up. Up next, do not be fooled. Do not be fooled. Normal still exists. There are different norms for different types of behavior, but norms do exist and they are indestructible. For example, the norm of grammar is correctness. The norm of rhetoric is effectiveness. And the norm of logic is validity. Normal is still around. Do not be fooled. Coming up, how to think about the inevitability of change. Thank you. Change is not inevitable. The left uses the myth of inevitability of change to put pressure on conservatives to quit resisting change. We know with certainty that the inevitability of change is false because we know that it is inherently contradictory. It cancels itself out. The definition of inevitable in the Merriam-Webster dictionary is incapable of being avoided or evaded, certain. The Merriam-Webster dictionary dictionary definition of change is to make radically different, transform, and the antonym of uh, change is fix, freeze, set, stabilize. So according to the dictionary, change is not inevitable, but the opposite of inevitable. Therefore, change is not inevitable. Back in a minute. the true conservative. He is the person that has the courage of his convictions and is confident in what he knows. He is the person that understands that cultural conservatism is more important than political conservatism. He is not selfish but minds his own business. He acts like an adult. He is patriotic and uses common sense. He expresses what he knows and does so with certainty. He makes judgments, refuses to speculate, speaks clearly and definitively, and is not afraid to say no. He's open-minded asking why, rather than why not. He is consistent, credible, and influential, not ashamed of his existence, unafraid to learn or correct his mistakes. He is a normal American, and he's better than the socialist. He is a better friend, father, brother, family member, and a better person, period. You have to know that. If you don't know with every fiber of your being that being a true conservative is best, then you're wasting your time. That concludes another episode of The Drill. Be honest, be smart, and be beautiful. And always ask yourself, what is real? How do I know? And what should I do about it? I'm Ron, and that's The Drill.